The views and opinions expressed in the following program are those of the participants and do not necessarily reflect those of KSMQ Public Service Media Incorporated or its assigns. This week on Garden Connections, if you are looking around your yard and thinking about gardening, join us. We are talking about square foot gardening. Is your green thumb ready? Stay with us. You're watching Garden Connections. Welcome to Garden Connections. I'm Amy Whitaker. Thank you for joining us. I'm happy to introduce Chris Graff, and she is here to talk with us about square foot gardening. We welcome your participation in preparing for planting. Call in and pose your question. So, when we're talking about square foot gardening, where do you start? What is the concept behind square foot gardening? The concept behind it, um, as far as I know, this was in the late 70s or early 80s. This is my dog-eared book that I've been using forever. Um, it's the idea that you can grow more produce in an enclosed area if you get rid of the rows. Our, we have always based our gardens on the concept of agriculture, planting the corn fields and planting the bean fields and those kind of things. They have to have rows in between them because the machinery has to get through. That does the hoeing and everything, you know, and the weeds for it. Once we take that into our yards and we plant in rows, we spend 90% of our garden time weeding the rows. So the concept is if you get rid of the rows, all you're going to weed is that little area where your plants are growing. It's... Um, my garden has wooden planks in between the, the areas and you just stay on the planks and there are no weeds there and you go into an area and you pull your weed out and you're done weeding and you don't worry about the rows anymore. So we're talking about gardening in square foot sections. Is there a reason for the square foot or is that just like a basis you can work from? I think it doesn't have to be square. Okay. Um, one of my areas that I'm planting this year that's doing really well is a huge circle and it's set up like a diamond, like a wheel. Okay, okay. so it's got four or five sections in it. And down toward the middle, I might have one tomato plant and then I've got a square area of this and this. And in between is the area where I walk. So it doesn't have to be square. When I, my first square foot garden in Austin, we had just done, uh, gotten new screens in our windows and my husband built them my squares made them rectangular so after they were planted I could put the screens down on top of them so th the square is not the magic I think it was done this way because the man who conceived of it was able to say within this one foot square you can plant one tomato plant 16 radishes, nine beans, And whatever. have it be productive yes. in that size. And, and it gives you, you can go outside and say, I think I'll go weed a square. It, it takes that frustration out of, oh, look at everything I have to do. I, I'm never going to get it done. You can walk out and you put four square foots together, usually, if we're going to talk about that. You have four square feet. It takes you about two to three minutes to weed that. And it also so. is helpful as far as the soil is concerned too, having these walkways and these areas. I mean, how, how does it affect our soil? Oh, it's, it's fantastic because you, you take your four foot section or your one foot or whatever, you turn that soil over, uh, again, even to condition the soil. This, this box has a bottom on it, but you wouldn't. You would just have the outline of it. You dig down about a foot, fix that soil, you never walk on the soil again. You're walking around it and you can reach it from all sides so the soil is always just soft and nice and it, it's so easy to work with. And from there you can easily add any amendments or fertilizer or anything that you would anything, need to. 
And, and one of the things that they talk about is every time you pick a plant, you dig a little hole, maybe put a little fertilizer, throw a little vermiculite and plant something else. So you're, you're in charge of your garden. You know how many seeds you have. You know how many plants you're going to have. You go out to weed and you've planted nine beans and there are 11 things in there. Three of those don't belong. So you pick out the three, you've got nine beans and you're done with your weeding. What okay. kinds of tools are we going to need if we want to think about starting a square foot garden? If you break it down to the very basics, okay, um, you don't have to have the wood outline. You could also, you, you can dig up a square foot or four by four. You don't have to have wooden planks. You can put down straw or newspaper or whatever. The wood is really nice to work on. But in, in theory, you need a trowel this is about what I use. You need a trowel and you need your finger and you need to be able to count and if you want to mark with string you know so you can see well this is the row of radishes I just planted next week I'm going to put another row in or another row you can kind of do that but you know where that stuff you know what you did. Mm -hmm. So you need a trowel to turn things over you need a finger to mark how many holes you're going to put in that square foot and you need water. Water. <laughs> Water's good. Yeah. Vermiculite's really good. Okay. You know, um, they when you put it in, you you cover a little with the soil, but you don't really mix the soil and the vermiculite together because the roots can go through that vermiculite so easily and then get down into the soil. Okay. So you like okay. vermiculite. Yeah, I'm kind of a fan. Peat moss is good too. Yeah. And then from there, so we're going to round up our tools. As far as marking off your like one foot within the four square mm -hmm. feet, is it best to string it or use wood or how would you mark off your different one foot I, I sections? Go, this is what I do. Okay, um, my, my four foot by four foot, do not, they wouldn't have these two uh, walls on them. It would be here, one, two, three, four. So okay, one, so these four sections I don't have in mind. So what I do is I go like this, <laughs> like that. <laughs> There's my one, two, three, four. I've got my four one by ones. Okay. So you can do, if you want a can or something like that, you could do a whole four by four of your beans, or okay. you know whatever you want it. In in my case, I do a four foot salad. Okay. Okay. So I do uh, a little. I'll do a one area that's radishes and some carrots right here and some lettuce here and a couple onions there. And then in a week or two after those start coming up, then I'll do my next salad here and then I'll do my next salad here. And then I have four by fours that are just my canning things, the things I'm doing in greater quantity. Okay. So then I can go out and pick my salad and it's just all there. Or you can do them all together. You know, all the lettuce here and all the carrots here. That the hardest thing, honestly, truly, the hardest thing about square foot gardening is you have to count the seeds. Okay, now that's not bad if you're doing green beans mm -hmm. or peas or something like that. Um, I get pretty lazy when it gets to the carrots. I'm not a real fan of carrot counting <laughs> the seeds. So I will just scatter. But then you have to go back and do that thing we all hate to do, which is called... I have to pull these little tiny baby carrots up to make room, mm -hmm. you know. So when you can actually count, it really helps the weeding. Mm -hmm. If you're not quite sure what something looks like, it's really good for beginner gardeners. If you put nine radish seeds in there and nine things come up that look all the same and two things don't look like them, even if you don't know if they're weeds, you can pretty much figure those don't belong there and mm -hmm. you can get rid of them. And we can even implement some of our regular gardening practices like crop rotation or intercropping or companion plants. Yes. Those yes. types of things. They look so pretty. They just look so pretty because if you, in, say, Amy, we're going to do a one by one, we can put one tomato plant in the middle here. Well, that's going to take a lot longer to get going, okay? And we're going to vine it up. That's the other thing about square foot gardening. You're not going to let your cucumbers and your squash and things like that go out. You're going to go up with them. Okay. okay. 
So we got a tomato and it's gonna be going up this way, but it's gonna take a while to get going. So in the meantime, around the edges, we can throw in a couple heads of lettuce, some radishes around here, the things that come up fast, because we'll be picking those out before the tomato gets shading them. So you're, you constantly have something going on. Mm -hmm. And you talked about vining plants. Now, going up instead of out, how do you accomplish that? Okay, um, in, in my garden, my garden is fenced in and I have that re-rod stuff that goes under concrete. Okay, we've got that fenced around the garden because we live on the outside of time and we have deer and rabbits and all sorts of friendly things <laughs> there. So the way I have my garden planned is anything that needs to go up is along the edge there and it'll just grow up that, okay? In the book, they talk about if you have, say, a four foot section, you're going to, on the north side of that four foot section, you're gonna use PVC pipe or um, the, anything that you can put up like this. Mm -hmm. And that'll be on the north side and you string your string. Oh, you probably need string. Okay. Okay. So if you're gonna do this, you string it down so it's on the north side so as it's growing up, the other plants are getting all the sun down here. So you've got mm -hmm. your radishes and all that stuff going on here and then you got your cucumbers or whatever growing up here. And you, you, do, you trim them so that you're training them to go up. But again, you go out and there's a tendril going that way, you wind it. You know, mm -hmm. you're, you're so much more in control. One of the things he talks about in here is, and I'm a great example, when spring comes to Minnesota and we're so weary after a long winter, we go nuts. <laughs> yeah. And then you have a hundred people out at the community gardens with their, doing their thing. By the end of the summer, you probably have at the most 15 to 20 people out of that hundred that are still working their gardens because we get carried away. Mm -hmm. This doesn't let you get carried away. You're, you're confi you can grow as much, but you're in control of it. You don't get overwhelmed. Yeah, you don't go out there and see 500 weeds and go, I don't know where to begin. Mm -hmm. Because most people don't have an entire day to weed. But they have three minutes to walk out and see if anything's growing and going, well, you don't belong. Mm -hmm. You're done. And I suppose if a section doesn't turn out or gets weedy or something happens, it seems like it would be pretty easy to just dig it up and start over. And it isolates itself from the rest of the garden. Mm -hmm. So you have something that just didn't work out or for some reason the soil wasn't right or it wasn't doing well, turn it and stick something else in there. Yeah. Now back to the vining plants. Um, many of them can get pretty heavy and naturally when they're grown along the ground they sit down in the soil which you know they get infested with all kinds of mm -hmm. bugs and mm -hmm. critters and so it probably is a great idea to keep them up but how do you keep those heavy things from falling off the vine or dragging the vine down? Right. Um, a lot of times you can use that you make slings for them. Okay, so if you have something growing up and you have a, a watermelon, I mean, if you're gonna grow massive watermelons, you probably don't wanna go that way with it. But now they have those nice little ones mm -hmm. and they don't go bad because you pick that nice little watermelon and eat it. So that you could use like pantyhose or I, whatever you have around, you can just tie it onto your, you know, and loop it down and kind of make a cradle for them. Okay. So that, and again, it they don't get bug infested because they're not laying on the ground and rotting, mm -hmm. you know. And you do, again, you're, you're, you're clipping off the side branches of things like the tomatoes and that so they're not gonna go all over the place. They're gonna go straight up the way you want them to go. So you may not be getting as much produce, but you're getting stronger, better produce than you would be just letting it go mm -hmm. all over the place. So just training it yep. how mm -hmm. you want it to be into the space that it's allowed. Yep. Now if we are talking about, you know, a square foot, what can you expect to grow in that square foot or section, two by two section throughout the season? I mean, we were just look this is this is true. i I do this, so believe me, this sounds amazing, but it really is true. Here's how much you can grow in two months, in two months, in just one garden block which would be four by four, so you'd have four of these together, mm -hmm. okay? All together, you can grow 32 carrots, 
12 bunches of leaf lettuce, 18 bunches of spinach, 16 radishes, 16 scallions, 16 beets, 9 turnips, 5 pounds of peas, 1 head of cabbage, 4 heads of romaine lettuce, 1 head of cauliflower, and 1 head of broccoli. That's a lot All of produce. Here. What, what, is, uh, what they say in here, and it's true because I do this, one 4x4 four four foot section is your garden for the summer. Mm -hmm. It will feed one member of your household the entire summer. So if you have two people in your household and you're not going to do canning or anything, you're going to have two 4x4 four four foot sections. If you have six people, have six. There's a practicality. There becomes a time when this is not practical. If, if people have massive gardens and they're going to grow things for um, the, the farmer's market and they're going to can a whole bunch of stuff and they've got eight people in their family, that kind of thing, then go to the rows because then you will have the machinery to go with it. But if you're one person and you want all that stuff we just talked about just for you over the course of the summer, find a four by four put, foot area and that's what you can get. And what have you grown in your square foot gardens? I don't know what I haven't grown. <laughs> um, I always try, we always try something new every year. I, I, every time I go, I'm like, well, I'd never, this year we have purple skinned carrots in our garden. Hmm. And we have um, Ichiban eggplant, which is a Japanese eggplant. Hmm. You know, we don't, uh, my, when my daughter and I go looking, we're just like, okay, what's the new thing we're going to try this year? But I grow um, beans. I grow pole beans. I don't do that in here, but it's the theory. It's in my square foot garden, and I have a pole that goes up with the string. And I can probably 20 to 30 quarts of dill beans in a season. And it's in an area which would be about a 4 by 4 Okay. okay. Um, I do peas. I do sugar snap peas. Um, all your basic things, I have Brussels sprouts going and cabbage, spaghetti squash, acorn squash, um, cucumbers, what else would I have? Onions, um, I can't, anything. anything, I mean just any, green peppers, jalapenos, I do a lot of canning of jalapenos, so I have a bit, one of my, when I talked about that wheel at the beginning, mm -hmm. one of my whole wagon wheel is nothing but um, jalapenos. But when they say you can plant them one foot apart with one foot in between, okay, now I can get, I can get four jalapeno plants here mm -hmm. because they have a distance apart. Nothing's going to get to them from the edges. And so, but four in a row would be from here out to there. Mm -hmm. So I have areas that are my designated canned goods that I do. I do my potatoes in a garbage can so that's it's in the it's in the square foot garden but it's I grow them in a garbage can so that condenses them too wow you know um, nasturtiums marigolds should always throw in a little bit of flowers you know just in a corners because it looks pretty and I can spaghetti sauce chili sauce salsa I, all and I all the tomatoes grow in there so now if you were to actually just make a box that's t 6 to 12 inches deep. Is this something you could bring inside and grow produce year-round in your I home? I would think so. I would think that, you know, as, as my husband was making this for me, I thought, you know, this is really neat because it really defines your foot by foot rather than, you know, drawing your line. <laughs> you can see that that's not hard, but look at how separated that would be. If you had four things like this, and it got to be the end of the season, but things were still growing, and you just picked this up and took it in with you. Or your herbs. I, this year, my, um, my bigger area of my square foot garden is all herbs. I moved the vegetables to the smaller area and put the herbs in here. And again, I've probably got one, two, three, four, five. I've probably got at least six to eight like basil plants in a one by one where if you were to do that in a row, again, you'd be going way out there, and then you got to weed both sides of it all the way down there. 
How do you determine how many seeds or how many started plants to put into a square? In here? Well, that's where, that's where this has, has come in. I've had this for a really, really long time. And there's a whole section in the back, and it, and it says um, beans. <coughs> um, nine bean plants in, well, this is a 12 inch by 12 inch, so you'd get nine bean plants in here, okay? Um, it takes you all the way through, and it shows you the planting, if you're going to plant by seed or if you're going to plant by plant, okay. that kind of thing. Um, beets, it's got one, two, three, four, one, 16 beets in this area. So you can go along here. It's got broccoli. Broccoli is one head. That's another one. Maybe you'd want to stick some little things around the edges until that got going. Um, cabbage is one head per, so you're going to go around the edges. What do they have? 16 carrots. Mine's a lot more because I don't count those <laughs> very well. But it, it takes it Swiss chard, and it, it's, it's all in here. Mm -hmm. Corn. Corn, you know. I so that's. I suppose they probably, it looks like they base it on the overall mature size of the plant. Yes, yes, definitely. And this is, without crowding and being able to have nice full produce, this is how many things. That's why I think he went on the one-by-one one concept. Mm -hmm. You know, and then you can just, like I said, it doesn't have to be square. But it's, it's so nice if you go out and there's some little space there and it's like, I don't know what to put there. Well, let's just do a one by one and throw some, some little thing in there. You know, it, it just, it makes you feel so in control. I'm one of those that didn't get out to weed a lot when I had rows and I would just get so frustrated. I'd be like, where are the tomatoes? You know, that kind of thing. Yeah, if I remember as a child, dad would say, it's weeding night and we would all run. <laughs> yeah, I know, I know. It's a, yeah, I know. And this is, and you know the other thing that's really nice about this? When people come over to visit and they want to, you know, if you know you're having company, you can run out and just like weed your whole garden and it looks really pretty and you haven't you don't have to hoe because your soil's soft. You don't have to break up soil or anything. You just run and pull those couple weeds out and they go, oh, how do you find the time to do this? And they go, well, it took me about eight minutes to do my entire garden, so. <laughs> and they were probably thinking, wow, she's superwoman. Yeah, yeah. That's, this, has, this has just been such a wonderful thing. And for people who work, who really want to have a garden, but it, it's just too overwhelming. This is such a good way to go. Um, I have a friend of mine who has some physical disabilities, and she had somebody make her a raised garden, mm -hmm. but in the sections. So she can actually sit on the edge and do that. She doesn't have to get down on the ground and do it. So you can lift it up to a raised area. It's very practical for people, possibly that are in wheelchairs or something like that. Mm -hmm. You can still do that. So, so it's, it's very versatile. Very just versatile. about anybody can do it just about anywhere. Yeah. It seems to be very easy maintenance. It's really, really nice for like uh, mothers with small children. That used to be teaching Katie how to count. We're going to put nine beans in here. Let's poke nine holes. Now you count them and put them in here. And the kid, when they start coming up, there's this, mm -hmm. I did all this, you know. That gratification. So I mean, it's a great family yes. project too. Yes, and you, and you can don't include everybody. Nobody runs away. They don't mind. <laughs> it's not so. It's not so bad. So and that you also, because you're not stepping on it because it's contained in that. The watering that you do is of a different nature. Okay. Okay. I was just thinking about this here, and and he talks about this in here too. Because you're when the plant starts coming up, you're actually or if you're putting transplants in, you're making a little dip in there. So you may water a half a cup once a week or a cup on something mm -hmm. once a week. But because it's not bleeding out anywhere and the soil around it is moist because you've got the wood around it, you're not watering the rows and bringing up more weeds. It stays right here. Mm -hmm. So I use, I use a sprinkler. I just turn it on and use a sprinkler. But if I get out there and something's looking wilty, half can, you know, half a glass of water and, and it's there and it's holding it. So yeah, I suppose, you know, just naturally compacting the soils by walking on them around creates kind of a natural barrier for all of those kinds of things too. Yep. 
Yep, and holds the moisture in because this is all hard and this is all soft, so it's going to stay here. Mm -hmm. So, would you ever use any mulching or anything within your square foot? Mm -hmm. Yeah, okay. you can make this as basic or as organic or as complicated or whatever as you want. Okay, um, I have a compost pile, and I can if I need to soften things up or I've. Now this year I've been treating the soil because it's like I was telling you I live, my garden is an old alfalfa field and the soil is about this color. So slowly I'm turning this over but again I'm only working one square at a time. And I, I will take out half the soil and I'll put in some peat moss and some vermiculite, put this back in and I've got a square ready to grow nine beans or whatever. So it doesn't take that much. And it, if you pull out and replant, you're going to throw a little vermiculite or peat moss or mm -hmm. little fertilizer, whatever you want to do. You know, another thing that's really nice with this is if you're going to go away and you have a one by one foot, they have those really cool things you can put in and put the pop bottle on the top with the water. It's going to take care of this little area while you're gone. I never you thought know? of that. I, I only figured that out this year because. Um, one of the girls that works for me was at a rummage sale and she brought me these things. She said, this looks like you. And I'm like, this is so cool because when we go, I can just put that in there and that'll keep that moist because it doesn't need as much water. And how many years have you been doing square foot gardening? I have been doing square foot gardening since about 19, well, Katie was born in 83. So 80 to 83, somewhere in there. Okay. You know, and I, I, um, I have a regular perennial garden too that's just mm -hmm. kind of does its own thing. But my vegetable gardens have always had some aspect of the square foot going on. And so the square foot has really, really worked out for you. And Beautiful. hopefully, if any of you out there would like to give it a shot, go ahead. It sounds like it would be a lot of fun and pretty simple to do. And for more information, you can log on to ksmq.org and click on Garden Connections. You can catch past episodes, join the blogs, and tell us about your gardening experiences. You can also email the show. The address is garden at ksmq.org. Tune in next week when we'll talk about how you can use herbs that you have grown in your garden. I'm Amy Whitaker. See you next week.